Welcome to another episode of Voices. I'm your host, Keston Jones. Visionaries offering information with clarity, expertise, and substance. We are content experts. Let your voice be heard. We're back with another episode of Voices, Visionaries Offering Information with Clarity, Expertise, and Substance. And today we have a very special guest, Mr. Christopher Garcia. Um, Thank you for joining us today. Uh, Before you hear from Mr. Chris Mm -hmm. Garcia, um, what I want to do is I want to read his bio so you can find out more about the work that he's doing. Uh, Christopher Garcia is co-director of the Bronx Defenders' newest project, the Robert P. Patterson Jr. Mentoring Program an initiative he helped to create and launch in 2016. As a highly regarded expert in the field of conflict resolution, Christopher brings almost two decades of experience to any crisis management engagement. He also created and launched a cure violence program called Release the Grip in 2015. Working alongside city council member Vanessa Gibson and RTG program, he spearheaded an an initiative um, that significantly reduced gun violence in the 44th precinct in the Bronx by 2016. Christopher is highly esteemed among those who serve this city with him for the work he did with gang gang involved youth in the 44th precinct. He received a state assembly proclamation from Assemblywoman Latoya Joyner and a city citation of merit from city council member Fernando Cabrera Mm -hmm. in 2015. Congratulations, um, by the way. Mm -hmm. Concurrently, Christopher is a Cure Violence Training Academy instructor for the Department of Health and Mental Hygiene, training new and elevated employees throughout 22 citywide Cure Violence sites. He is also a senior instructor for the United um, Chaplain State of New York, an associate pastor with Love Legacy Chapel, International, where he is in charge of designing various ministerial trainings. He's earning his bachelor's degree in sociology from St. Francis College and graduated valedictorian from Bariqua College's Rising Hope program. Christopher is a loving husband and dedicated father of three incredible children, 17-year-old Noah and Noel, twin sons who are juniors in high school, and 19-year-old Emily, Emily, who is a sophomore in BMCC. Mr. Garcia is beloved. Uh, warmly embraced throughout the community, um, and he's the epitome of understanding that it takes a village to raise a child. Mm. Once again, thank you for being uh, with us today, Mr. Garcia. Um, as, as, so, as you were reading that, man, I was like, I was trying to figure out, that's me? You're talking <laughs> about me? That's a lot of stuff there, man. I appreciate you. <laughs> Absolutely. From what I know of, of you, yeah. this bio does not nearly begin to, um, to, to, to really... Um, identify the work that you've been been doing in the community mm. for a number of years. So um, let's jump right in. Mm. Um, tell us about the work and what led you to this work. Um, well, the work that I'm doing now, as you saw, as you read, I'm, I'm a director of mentoring and uh, in the Bronx Defenders. And for what led me to that work is me understanding I, I needed a mentor. I was in a lot of trouble as a young person growing up, and um, it's part of my calling. I understand it because of where. Um, you know, where my life had gone and certain turns that I had taken in my life. Um, and because I was under the tutelage of people who didn't love me, and I didn't really understand what real love is supposed to look like in, with regards to that. So I was just uh, just as um, easily led as any of our youth are today, easily um, impacted and, and desirous of being embraced, just like any of our youth are today. But, you know, I was surrounded by people who themselves didn't never get mentored correctly, didn't understand their role in the community. And so, you know, we live by that each one teach one philosophy. And I was taught by folks who didn't really get it themselves. So I understand that today I'm called, I'm called on a different level. I'm called to pour life into the loves, into the lives of our youth. I'm called to, to be present um, as, as a staple, as someone that they can look up to, as someone that they can, that they can know will always be there for them. With, with, a pointed, with a finger pointed in, in the direction of growth and development and, and taking care of themselves and taking care of their mind. Because um, that's what mentoring is all about. 
right? Absolutely, teaching, yeah. teaching how to take care of your mind. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. I, I too understand the importance of having a calling. Mm -hmm. And um, right now you're the director of a program that focuses on mentoring. Mm -hmm. However, prior you were the director of a program that focused on cure violence, um, stopping gun violence within mm -hmm. our community. So the question I want to ask today is why mentoring? Um, why is mm -hmm. why do you believe that there was a need for you to 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 not necessarily switch because I know you're still heavily involved in the kill violence work, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. but why is it important for you to um, now now work primarily in one of your major roles um, with the youth? Well, I tell you, one one of the things that's so funny is so what I, what I recognize there are so many there are so little programs for young people that come from where we come from. We're, I'm from the Bronx. We're from the Bronx. We you know me and you know each other for a while. Um, the Bronx is is the is the poorest congressional district in America. Mm. And when you're dealing with when you're dealing with young folks that come from a poor congressional district like we come from, we the need is just in, enhanced. It's in it's it's magnified. The need for it um, is incredible. Why mentoring is is really about it's not why mentoring, why not? Mm -hmm. We need mentors. We need people that are invested in our community, that understand the systemic things coming against us in our community, that understand the the evils and the voices that are in the air all the time. See, we have to compete with voices. Mm -hmm. um, there, are vo there are contrary systemic voices targeting our young people. And if our young people uh, we, if our young people are, are only hearing those voices, then they begin to embrace those voices as truth in their life. So we need, they need to hear a constant, at least um, a constant amount of contrary voices to these evils that are coming in. Our children, youth as it is, that we battle as youth. And a lot of us have become so, you know, a lot of us get older and forget all about how it was for us <laughs> when we were young, right? But the truth is, man, we were we were struggling. Yeah. We were struggling. And and if we if we don't remember what it is, then we won't have that identifying piece for our young people. Because there's a gap, there's such a gap between the communication between our younger people and our older people and then our elder people. And even our older people are just forgetting. And it's and it's almost you know, with the systemic things that are happening in our in our community, Keston man, you know, it's it's um it's very simple to get caught up in all the things that are happening in our world. We have to pay rent. We have to go to work. We have children. We have um, we have bills. We have aspirations. We have dreams. We have things happening. We have people at work that are annoying, and we have bosses that are overbearing, right? And we have <laughs> we have all these things happening. So the last time, sometimes the last thing we're thinking about is what's going on with one of these young people in our community. But the truth is, these young people are who we were, and our world is going to be shaped by them. And if we're not, and if we're not in a constant place of developing them, and molding them, and and just being present with them, we we're going to be in trouble. The, the the future the future of our communities won't ever be anything more than what it's ever been. So so question. Mm -hmm. So we understand the need for a mentor, but what makes a good mentor? Mm -hmm. um, what what are some of the skills and the qualities that this individual should have in order mm. to be present with this particular child, um, with this particular young adult. Because um, we understand that um, our teens are facing a number of issues. Um, mm -hmm. Teen pregnancies are uh, um, rates are up. Mm -hmm. Intimate partner violence, incarceration, lack of role models. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and you mentioned some of the re root causes um, of these particular issues, but what are some of the things that should uh, a mentor should have in order to be an effective person mm -hmm. uh, working with the, with these with the youth? <laughs> uh, it gets summed up real quickly. You just have to care. Mm. First and foremost, you have to care and you have to be present. It's the, it's the power of presence in the life of our young people that's going to overcome it all and the actual characteristic of caring. That means that when you're in sorrow, then I'm present in your sorrow. When you're in joy, then I'm present in your celebrating. When you're in when you're in confusion, then I'm present in helping you solve that problem. Yes. When you're when you're when you're um, whatever it is you're going through, I'm there as someone who either can help or at least just be present. And I'm going to tell you, it makes all the difference in the world because you can be as philosophical, as um, as intellectual, as eloquent as you want to be, but if you're not there for me when I need you, then then it didn't impact my life at all. One of the strongest things I heard, I went you know, through seminary 
Um, and I heard so many powerful things in seminary. But one of the most life-changing things I ever heard was uh, one of the professors said, um, you know, people, people don't care about how much you know until they know about how much you care. And it changed my life. It changed the entire, that statement had changed the entire way about what I, what I saw myself doing in, our, in my community. Because the truth is, right, if I, if I don't care, then what, you know, what is my motivation for what I'm doing? Is it selfish ambition? Is it promotion? Is it elevation? We can do all those things, but is that helping my community or is that just self-serving? So I had to really look at that and say, you know what? Yeah, that's right. I have to, I have to uh, this has to come from a place of compassion and empathy. It has to come from a place of caring and realness. Absolutely. Yeah. And um, personally, I've seen you um, at a number of events working with the youth mm -hmm. and I, I see how they gravitate towards you. Mm -hmm. I see how these, these, these um, teenagers, um, both um, young men and young women, um, they, they, they find something about the way you interact with them to be wholesome and, and, and it says in the work that you do. Mm -hmm. um, with respects to the work that you Thank do. Thank you for that. <laughs> <laughs> Don't mention it. Mm -hmm. With respects to the work that you do, you've had the opportunity to work with a number of agencies, elected officials, mm -hmm. um, you name it. I've seen you work in these various areas. What are some of the things that we can do as a community, working together in concert with elected officials, agencies, and systems to better improve relationships or relations with youth, mm. um, to help empower them to stay away from uh, mass incarceration, mm. violence, and, and, and all these issues that we've mentioned? Well, I mean, I think just basically get, being more intentional. I, you know, I was talking with, uh, I was talking with Shani before, and, and, and it, was, it was incredible. Um, how she even mentioned it, that you know, being more intentional about what you're doing, being purposeful to be engaged in the community, to be engaged in programs that you know are servicing young people or people in our community. You, we, this is something we're, one of my, one of you know, the things that I'll even speak about later, um, we've been programmed in our communities, especially, especially with this mentality, it's, it's called a mind your business mentality. Gotcha. Right, and that's that's something that's implemented. And we, we we grew up learning that, right? They taught us that growing up. But the reality is, that's somebody else's idea for who we're supposed to become. Because if we're minding our own business in our community, then that means that whatever's going on in your household doesn't matter to me, and I'm not involved in it, and I shouldn't and I shouldn't have any worries about it. But that's not who we are as Indigenous people, brother. Mm. Right. As indigenous people, we sit in circles as indigenous people. Our communities are, are joined together. Your son is my son and my son is your son. And we're supposed to take care of each other. Whatever's happening with you is my business. And I'm supposed to be vetted in that. I'm supposed to be a stakeholder in what's happening in your community, in your in your household, because then it's happening in mine. And mm. so that means that what we can do just just simple. Let's say, say hi to each other. Greet each other, man. How you doing, brother? Nice to see you today, man. Say something to your neighbor. Um, um, that's something that's simple. But go to go to community board meetings. Go and visit the community service um, providers in your community. Learn who they are. Learn who is servicing people in need in your community. And then figure out how to be more involved in that. Because ultimately, until we do that type of thing, um, we, we get st we, we'll, we'll be stuck in this rut where what's happening with you doesn't really matter to me. So and what are, what are the individuals that are saying that they're striving to do that, mm -hmm. um, however, they're unable to find resources or outlets, mm -hmm. meaning that the people that are in power are, quote unquote, not allowing them to be a part of the process. Mm -hmm. What can we do to bridge the gap with understanding and recognizing that this is the issue, but how can we find true um, resources and true um, support to make it happen? Yeah, that's been a challenge. Yeah. That's been a challenge. Um, just re I, I, me myself, I always research and vet the, the things that are happening in my community. Who's doing what? Research it. F um, look and see. It's easy to say that these people are doing something just because they're there. But if 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 you're not really looking to see what's what's the need in your community, then you won't know whether the needs are being met. Mm. And gotcha. so, and, and there's something, so research, research what's happening, what's happening in your community, research the problems that are going on. And that's where you go into the community board meetings. You find out that there's a lot of, you see, there's, there's segments in those meetings where you see um, some of the problems that are being expressed in the community. Who's actually moving towards 
helping that? Who's actually moving towards being bringing solutions to the problems? And if there are nobody, there is nobody bringing solutions to the problem, then you should look in the mirror about who can do it. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, <laughs> thank you, thank yeah. you for being here today. Um, one thing I want to do is if you can leave us with any final thoughts um, about this subject, anything that you have upcoming, please mm -hmm. share today and, and let us know how can we get in contact with you. Um, you know, to hear more about the wonderful work that you're doing. Awesome. Um, well, final thoughts are, yeah, I'm very appreciative for you having me over here, brother. <laughs> I, I admire the work that you've been doing. Um, I don't know that, you know, you, you, you don't like to hear that too much. It's hard, it's hard to hear, but I want to salute you for the work you're doing and for even creating platforms for us to come in and have these type of dialogues. It's very important. Um, another thing that I want to leave is that um, with anyone who's doing this work, with anyone who's, um, or who wants to do this work, get involved with, get involved, come and reach out. I have, I'm, I'm releasing Culture Hunters Initiative. It should be, it should be, uh, it should be made public very shortly. The Culture Hunters Initiative is one of my projects that I'm bringing to the table, and it's really about not only creating platforms for us to get to know one another better, for us to, for us to understand one another better as people, so there's this melting pot of people that live in the city, but it's also um, an initiative that I'm putting together that want that wants to create possibilities for young people in our community who have never left our community to go abroad and to live for weeks at a time with mm. different host families. And that will be uh, one of the ways, because one thing is I know for me, tra travel is transformative. So when you are traveling and you get to experience cultures from different uh, uh, global areas, then you, you, it enlightens your ability to understand society on a global level, which will then enlighten your ability to operate entrepreneurially on a global level. Yes. And that's one of the things our communities need financial, uh, that's one of the components of Culture Hunters is financial, uh, financial reliability, uh, my God, financial literacy and yeah. financial understanding and being able to understand how to build your brand because business in this, in this millennium is way different than it's ever been. And our younger people have a greater advantage in that, in that response, in that regard. So we are able, if we can create that, that's something, and you, I, I'm looking for people to donate to that, people to sponsor that, people to get involved in that, because um, that's gonna be a trend, it's gonna be a life-changing thing, and that's really what I'm about, changing the lives of our young folks. Absolutely. So Culture Hunters Initiative will be on culturehunters.com. It's gonna be a blog and a podcast on there very shortly. Um, keep looking for that. You can you can find me on Facebook, Christopher Garcia. You can find me on Instagram, Chris Christ Barrow 100. Um, reach out to me and um, get involved in some of the things that, that I'm putting up on my platforms. Absolutely, man. Once Appreciate again, it. it's a pleasure to have pleasure, you. Brother. And in the words Thank of... Um, Glenn Martin, those closest to the mm -hmm. problem are often those closest to the solution. Yes, sir. Um, so really appreciate to have you here today. Again, this is, has been Voices, Visionaries Offering Information with Clarity, Expertise, and Substance. Signing off. Peace.